What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. So, um, I had a lot of people ask me some questions about how the rear mount radiator setup works, and it worked awesome for me in Sick Week, and I've had some people ask questions on Facebook and all kinds of stuff like that, so I figured I would make a video explaining exactly how I did mine. And, um, so far, I'm really, really, really happy with it. Last summer, had some struggles. Um, wasn't the greatest setup in the world. I blame it on poor flow because of a couple fittings I had on there, and then I also blame it on probably insufficient fans and not the greatest setup for wiring. So what I did this year to make it work is I aimed for over 3,000 CFM of air movement from the fans because the fans solely do the work. The first day in Florida, the car blew a fuse, for the fans, poor wiring, like I was saying. Um, and just sitting in traffic, temp just climbed. I was at 220 within five minutes of driving it. But with the fans on, it literally cools it down immediately. So the way this car is set up, radiator under the trunk floor. So you can see it here. Don't mind that mess of wires. I did that in a truck stop parking lot in Florida because poor wiring. But now it works pretty good and I will redo that so it works much nicer. But see, I got the radiator hung up. I got a little bar welded here right off the frame, right to it. And then it just mounts up to the back of the trunk here, back here kind of. And then I got another bar over on this side as well, holding it up there. And it's pretty damn sturdy. It don't move at all. It's very nice. Um, yeah, so basically the mounting is the simple part. And then this one runs a EWP, a Davis Craig 150 water pump on it. The little turbo looking guy just chilling right there. And if you buy the fittings that go with it, they're kind of junk. And so I ended up welding them on there to get them to not leak. And so that's what I did with that. And then for fans, it has two spalls on it and I can get the part numbers if anyone wants them, but they flow 1800 CFM a piece. And this thing, it sits really low and it's basically a street sweeper. I mean, the fans crank up dust everywhere if you're in a like a crappy parking lot like it was when I wired them. So it works pretty awesome. And this radiator, I will grab a tape measure and give you a legitimate dimension, but I believe it's 29 by 17 sounds right to me. Let me grab a little measurement for you. So I just measured that guy and it is 30 by 17 from end to end overall total length. So not a huge radiator. All that is is a fluidine replacement radiator for a 97 Cobra. It used to be in the front of this car back when Dylan had it and I cut the brackets off and put it in the back. So nothing special there. I think they're like $250 on Summit. So nothing insane by any means. So then with a rear mount radiator, you wanna use a surge tank in the back and you want this to be your highest location your highest point of water in the car. So you can see my surge tank, it's right here. It was $20 on Amazon. That's seriously all it is. As far as the cap goes, I have no idea what the pressure is. I don't know. It's just a, it's just a cheap tank and it, it seems to work pretty good. I just welded an end on it right here just to mount it up. I used to have it, this used to have a bolt through it because it was down about three inches, but um, I felt that it was ultra close to not being the highest point. So I figured if I raise it up three inches, it should for sure be. And then I just put two 16 AN bungs right on the side. So this is the return. And that bottom one is the feed right to the radiator. And that comes down and goes in right here, just like so. And that is one inch heater hose off of Amazon. I think I bought 20 feet for $50. So nothing fancy. Just uh, some Fragola push lock fittings with some clamps on there, simple as that. And then right next to it here, I got uh, the overflow. So, you know, just your standard setup there. And so the lines come all the way under the car. Like you can see the feed line here, comes right off of the water pump and goes right up through the shock, kind of in between the rear end and runs right along the frame all the way to the front of the car. And that guy comes out right here is this one. There is no motor in it, so I can't show you how it hooks up, but basically how these two hoses are sitting, this one here 
And this one here is how they go. This one pulls up a little bit and goes in just like that. And this one literally sits just like that. And they both go right into a 417 Motorsports billet water manifold, which I have right here. Just like that. And you can see that one hose is angled because I put an angled fitting on it just like that. So you can see how that goes in there. And then this other one just pops right in the top. Right? Like that, kind of. Like I said, these things do move around. but. And then for what I have for fittings on the top is a coolant pressure. Is that one? And this one is the return from the steam vent. I know there's a lot of discussion on where that needs to go. I had mine in the trunk. And then... I just decided to change it because it seemed like it leaked sometimes. And so I just put it right on that thing. No issues, never leaked. Car ran cool, didn't seem to notice any big difference in it or anything like that. So uh, yeah, that was my deal with that. I'll show you those fittings that I had that I don't really know if they were the problem, but they definitely weren't the best situation in the whole world. So they are these guys. My exhaust is super close to the front of the block. So to make it fit in there, I had to run one of these, I believe this is also a Fragola, tight radius fitting, but I didn't like that tight radius. I just felt like it slowed the flow down a lot. So ditched that, went with the 417. Um, radiator's got a little bit of an angle, but nothing too crazy. I actually lowered it this winter, but I might put it back up because it, I definitely, a big wheelie, it will hit the fans on the ground. And these fan motors are bigger than the other ones. But as far as those fans, I just wired them twin relays with uh, just a trigger from the Holly. So they turn on at 160. And you can be driving down the road. It'll get up to around 180-ish, 178. Let off the gas, and it's back to 160 almost immediately. So super happy with it. It works absolutely amazing. And like I said, with that much CFM, these things are street sweepers. They blow so much air. It is unreally, unbelievable. But yeah, so that's basically the setup. It's really quite simple. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me or comment below. I will do my best to help you out. But uh, yeah, I know a lot of people use like the Mezzarine remote mount water pumps. Never really mess with them. They're ultra expensive and they don't really flow a whole lot more than the EWP 50 or 150 or whatever it is. So that was kind of my opinion there. And I really liked this one just because of the way that it mounts. The mounting is, it just works so good hanging like that. It's simple. It's out of the way. You literally don't ever have to take it off if you don't want to. It's a pretty stellar setup. As far as bleeding it goes, I've had some issues with it. But the last time I did it, what I did was I jacked the front of the car way up, like way up. So make the front, the steam ports, the highest point in the car. And then I filled it with water and it, then it only took so much. So then I kicked the pump on, turn it off, fill it with more water, kick the pump on, turn it off, crack the steam ports, close them, fill it up, crack the steam ports, turn the pump on, just kind of back and forth doing that until it didn't take any more water. And it was full and it never bubbled. Turn the pump on, no bubbles. Turn it off, no bubbles. And everything was good. And it, it seemed to be perfect when it was in Florida. It never, usually when they have air in them, you'll hear them gurgle when you're, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. <laughs> usually when you turn the pump off, if they got air in them, you'll hear them gurgle. This one gurgled sometimes last summer. I, I kind of had it apart, together and apart quite a bit, so. I did it quite a few times, but yeah, it would just glug, 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 glug when you shut the car off. And it doesn't seem to do that anymore. Like I put 75 miles on it, driving all across town, sitting in traffic, going 60 miles an hour for, you know, a longish period of time. And it seemed to work absolutely awesome. So definitely highly recommend it if you're lack of room like me, or like I just like clearance around all my stuff. So it was easy to put the radiator back here out of the way, never mess with it. Um, weight bias is good in some situations, but that's my thoughts on it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I liked it and I'm definitely going to stick with it. I know I think in a few videos prior, I said 
I didn't really know if that was going to be the route, but after messing with it in Florida and how good it worked, it's definitely going to stay like that. I like the free engine bay. It's so nice and it's so convenient. So that's what all I got for that. Um, any questions, let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching. See you next time.